they would take the sheep and the goats and the cows, the herds, and they would just travel. They would travel from this big field to that big field and that big field. And after a while, all the fields close to where the tents where they lived, were, there wasn't enough food there for all of their sheep and goats and cows. So they couldn't come home at night. So they had to go out further away, so far away that they would just maybe pack a tent with them and stay there, out away from home. And they went further and further and further away. And you know what? Back then, they didn't have phones. Jacob's sons couldn't call back and say, hey, we're over here. Everything's okay. They couldn't do that. They didn't even have a mailman. They couldn't catch the guy and, and um, give him a letter to drop off back at Jacob's tent. They didn't have mailmen, so Jacob never could open a letter that said, you know, we're up here. But he did know that they were by the town of Skem. Shechem. Skem is the way they say it. So, but, and he, you know what he knew about the people in Skem? Skem? They were not the friendliest people. They were not very friendly. And so Jacob was maybe... I can imagine he was probably a little worried about his sons. They were up a long way away from home, and they were in an area where people were not extra friendly. And after a while, he thought, I need to know how my sons are doing and what's going on. And so he decided that he was going to send Joseph to find them. Now, Joseph was his favorite son, right? He was the son he loved. And now he was worried about his older sons, but there was ten of them. But what was he going to do? He was going to send Joseph all by himself to find out how, what was going on with his other sons. And I can imagine he said to Joseph, now, I want you to go see how your brothers are doing. They're, I know they're up near, near Shechem, Shechem, and they people in that town are not extra friendly toward us. They might have done something mean or bad to our flocks and your brothers, and so I'm going to send, I want to send you to find them and make sure that everything's okay with them. And you're going to have to watch out. You're going to be by yourself. And the road between here and there could be robbers and thieves and bad people along the way. And it's so far, and you, you're going to have to sleep by yourself at night. And have to make sure you get a safe place so no um, dangerous animals will come and hit you. So it was probably a dangerous trip. But Jacob loved his sons and wanted to know what was going on with them enough to send his favorite son to find them. Then, and Joseph, he was like, okay. I love my brothers too, and I want to find out what's going on with them. And so he went, even though he could have stayed there in the, in the tents with his dad. His dad's there, and there's Benjamin, his little brother. But he left his home and went on that trip by himself to go find his brothers. Now, he was going along. He got all the way up to the town of Skem, which was 50 miles away. And did, did Joseph have a car to drive or a bike to ride? No, he had to walk 50 miles. It was se several days to get there. And finally he got there and he did not see his brothers. He'd go up to the top of this hill and look out. You would be able to see hundreds of sheep and goats and cows. Um, but he couldn't find them. He didn't see them anywhere. He'd go up to the top of this hill and look over. Then he went up to the top of this hill and looked over. He didn't see him. Finally, some man... I don't know how, but some man saw him going from place to place, looked like he was lost, and said, What are you looking for, Sonny? I don't know what he said, what he said. But he asked him what he was looking for, and Joseph said, I'm looking for my brothers. Levi and Reuben and Judah and Simeon. There's ten of them, and they have lots and lots of sheep and goats and cows. And they're supposed to be somewhere in this area. And the man said, Oh, I know who you're talking about. I saw them, and I heard them talking, and they decided they were going to go to the next town that's 10 more miles down the road. Well, Joseph, he could.
could have said, well, I know the people in Shechem didn't hurt them. They're just fine. They're 10 miles down the road. I can just go back and tell Dad that they're, everything's fine. They're over in this other town. You think he did that, though? No. No. He wanted to find his brothers. He knew his dad would want to know more than just that they weren't hurt. He would want to know how they were doing and what was going on. Now, do you, do you see, can you think of any, mm, this is a hard thing to, to do, but let's see here. So, here we have Jacob and Joseph, and they are shadows of God the Father and Jesus the Son, right? Yeah. You kind of see that? Jacob, he loves his other sons, so he sends his most favorite son, Joseph. Now, God... He loved all of the people that he created, right? And he didn't just send his favorite son. He sent his only begotten son to find and, and save all the people that were lost, didn't he? Now, what about all those people? The brothers, the brothers, Jacob's sons, they were a long way away from home. And why were they a long way away from home? Because they had to find grass, because they were with the sheep and the goats and the cows. But all the people on the earth, everybody on the earth is a long way away from God, aren't they? And now why are they a long way away from God? Not just because God is in heaven and we're on the earth. Something even worse than that. Allie? Because they have sinned. Right. Everybody who's lived on the earth has sinned. And that separates all of us, everybody on earth, from God. But God sent his son, right? We remember that when we think of this. What's this picture remind us of? God. Who was a baby? Who was a baby? God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is God's son. And God sent Jesus to come to the earth, to live on the earth, and then what? To die? So that every, on the cross, and then he then he rose from the dead, so that all the people that that were away from God because of their sin could be brought near to God through Jesus Christ dying for and taking the place of the people that had sinned. So, if God is the Father and Jesus is the Son, that means that they are a you have a father and a son. They're part of a... Somebody said a word that's true, but I'm thinking of a different word. What? A family. That's right. And where does a family live? Home. At home. Where is God's home? Heaven. 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 That's right. God is in heaven, and Jesus is in heaven. And Jesus, the Bible tells us that everyone who believes on Jesus... They also become the sons of God. And so that means they are part of God's family. Right? And if we're part of God's family, then someday we will be able to go home to, to Jesus. And where is God and Jesus? In heaven, in their home. But if you're not part of their family, you will not be able to go to their home in heaven, will you? You won't. People that are not part of God's family, people who have not believed on Jesus, yeah, they're, they're, they're from their father, the devil. And they're going to go to the devil's home. So, the question today, we have lots more to learn about Joseph. Next week we're going to learn about what kind of relationship he had with, with his brothers. Remember, he went to find them. He saw them, and then he ran down to see them, and something's going to happen there. We're going to see what's happening there. But... Today, the thing to think about is, are you in God's family? Yes. Yes. Is God your father? Yes. Yes. He can only be your father if you believed on Jesus. Turn from your sin and believed on Jesus. It doesn't matter if we do certain things. It matters what we believe about Jesus. And if, Jesus, if we believed on Jesus and God is our father... That should mean that we're going to obey God because he's our father, right? And so if you say, yep, I'm in God's family, then I want to know, are you doing what God the Father wants you to do? Yeah. Yeah. 
first we want to know whether you're in God's family. Then we want to know, do you go to church? Because God's family members, they go to church. Do you read the Bible? Because God's family members, they read the Bible. Do you talk to God in prayer? Because God's family members, they talk to God in prayer. So, we saw that Jacob and Joseph had a very special relationship. Joseph loved God, and that's one of the reasons that Jacob loved him dearly. They talked about the things that God had them uh, had for them. And if you are part of God's family, you should want to learn the Bible, read the Bible, talk to God in prayer, go to church so you can learn more about the Bible, be kind to one another because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Obey our parents, obey our teachers, all the things that God tells us to do, we should want to do if we're in God's family. Right? So let's remember that this week. If you think you're in God's family, if you say you're in God's family, you need to make sure you're living like one of God's children.